Hello, friends. I am so sorry. I did not realize that my mic had been turned off. I hope you can hear me now. Um, one of you, please let me know if you can hear me now. I really, really hope you can. Um, I did not realize that my mic was off. So, yep. We should be back up and running. <laughs> sorry, that was so crazy. Um, but yeah, so today we're talking about self-esteem. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and jump in. Um, I apologize for those of you who are watching before. I did not realize that my mic on the computer wasn't working. Um, if you could, please let me know if you can hear me now. I just want to make sure. Um, just shoot me a quick message. Yes, no, maybe so. All right, well, I'm just going to believe on faith. Okay, <laughs> so, um, but like I said, we're talking about self-esteem, um, which is really, really important. So I ask that you guys, please, please share this um, because everyone knows someone who struggles with uh, self-esteem. It's so incredibly common and it's so, so important because it affects um, so many aspects of your life, your relationships, your work life, your spiritual life. Um, self-esteem is so, so critical. Um, so I wanted to kind of make a clarification before we really get into it. I wanted to talk about the difference between self-esteem and self-confidence because self-confidence is your belief in your abilities, while self-esteem is your appraisal of your value and your worth. Um, so it's possible to have a high self-confidence while having a low self-esteem. Um, they're not interchangeable. They're not exactly synonymous. So I just wanted to make that uh, clarification so we know exactly what we're talking about. Um, so as far as talking about self-esteem, I wanted to discuss some of the symptoms of low self-esteem. What does that look like? So um, some of the symptoms are, of low self-esteem are one, having difficulty saying no. If there are things that you do not want to do or you know you can't really do, but you still have difficulty saying no and finding your mouth saying yes when your body is saying no, um, that's usually a sign of low self-esteem because you feel like um, you need to kind of be what people expect you to be um, in order for people to like you and give you compliments, which then feeds your self-esteem. Because when you have a low self-esteem, you're usually trying to get um, attention and affection and compliments from the outside world in order to make you feel better, um, which ultimately doesn't really work because when you truly have low self-esteem, you tend to minimize compliments and maximize what you believe to be perceived criticism. Um, but nonetheless, we do it. So if you find that you have difficulty saying no um, and you say yes to things that you don't want to do, uh, usually, and, and on a habitual basis, I would say, um, then usually that may be a sign of low self-esteem. Also, um, and that goes along with people-pleasing, self-neglect. So if you are um, ignoring things that are necessary for you as far as like your health and um, your self-care kind of things, if you find that you're neglecting things that you um, usually do or things that benefit you in order to do things for someone else on a consistent basis, if you constantly find yourself putting yourself on the back burner um, in order to do for other people um, to the point where it's negatively impacting your life, um, then that can be a sign of low self-esteem. Um, self-neglect is, is really tough um, because a lot of times we're just like, oh, well, I'm just being a good person, I was trying to help people. But if it's truly at the expense of yourself and your health, then you're hurting yourself because um, we cannot pour from an empty cup. Um, so it's important to make sure that um, even when you do have a heart for other people, um, that you are not neglecting yourself um, <clears throat> in an effort to take care of others. There needs to be a balance there. Um, some other signs of low self-esteem, attention seeking. Um, which is kind of um, tough to resist since social media is a thing. <laughs> and it's so easy to just be like, oh, I'm just going to get a bunch of likes and then I'll feel better about myself. Um, so attempting seeking behaviors. Um, and sometimes it's not even 
positive attention that you're seeking, just any attention whatsoever. Um, and that can be a sign that you don't feel like you're getting fed as far as emotionally. Um, so you'll use um, sometimes less than excellent methods in order to um, receive attention or affirmation from people. Um, if you're incredibly indecisive, that is me. Um, if my friends are like, oh, what do you want to do? Or where do you want to eat? I am very like, oh, I don't care. Um, what I do, in fact, very much care. <laughs> like, there were times where I ate stuff I didn't even want to eat just because I didn't want to say anything. Um, so that's another sign. If you're very indecisive about things, or you want to at least come across indecisive so that you're not um, making the wrong decision, um, then that's another sign. Over-apologizing. This is a huge one. Um, I kind of laugh about it, but, like, people will tell me, oh, you apologize too much. You don't have to keep apologizing. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then I just get so stressed out. And then I keep like saying sorry. Um, and it's funny, but it's not. Um, so over apologizing is a huge, huge sign of low self-esteem. It happens all the time. Oversensitivity to criticism. That's a big one because um, the lower your self-esteem is, the more um, defensive you are because when you already have a low self-esteem and you feel like someone is criticizing you, um, because your sense of self is so fragile, um, you tend to take criticism incredibly personally. Instead of someone just giving you criticism about like a talk that you gave or a paper that you wrote, you take it personally as like, oh, you know, like I, I suck at this job or I'm just stupid and I'm not, I'm not good at school. Um, and like, whoa, whoa, we were not saying all that. <laughs> so when you take things um, personally, um, you're way more um, impassioned when it comes to defending yourself. You're way more sensitive to perceived criticism because you feel like the person is um, attacking you as a human being rather than giving you constructive criticism um, about something that you may have said or done. So oversensitivity and becoming defensive um, are also common signs of low self-esteem um, because you're not able to really separate yourself from <laughs> the product that you've made and your intrinsic value. They're interconnected. Um, so that's why we can be overly sensitive to constructive criticism. Um, also withdrawal, kind of feeling like, oh, you know, like, um, maybe my friends like only invited me because they felt like they had to, or maybe they don't actually want me to come. So I'll just stay home and kind of like getting stuck in your own head and then, um, becoming like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, and then over underachieving. So I really, really want to talk about perfectionism, but I'm not going to today <laughs> because I, I want to be mindful of everyone's time. Um, but I, I am definitely going to do a Wellness Wednesday solely on perfectionism um, because it's so, so important. But perfectionism is a huge symptom of low self-esteem because perfectionism is basically saying, um, I feel like I need to overexcel and just really um, hit these incredibly high expectations for myself. Otherwise, I'm a failure. And there's no in-between, there's no gray area. Either I'm perfect or I have no value. Um, and it sounds really dramatic, but this is people's reality. This is my reality. I struggle very much for, from perfectionism. Um, so people with low self-esteem tend to overperform because we feel like nothing we do is adequate. Um, so we kind of overdo it um, in order to feel like we're just meeting baseline. Um, or... <clears throat> What's, what's funny is that low self-esteem um, can also cause people to underachieve um, because we may feel intimidated. We may feel like we're not up to a task, so we can procrastinate um, instead. So overachieving and underachieving, not achieving, overworking and underworking um, can both be signs of low self-esteem. Um, so those are some of the symptoms. and and I want to make sure that we're all kind of on the same page as far as a picture of what low self-esteem is. 
So what are some of the causes? Where does low self-esteem come from? Um, because I think it's important for us to, to go back and understand where these things originate so we can attack them at the root. Um, so some causes are mostly, um, usually familial. So, but it can also be from relationships outside the family. Um, but neglect, um, feeling punished from people, um, obviously harsh criticism, people having unfairly high expectations on you, um, usually parents, um, experiencing a lack of affection, and um, just overall kind of poor treatment, being bullied by people. A lot of times, low self-esteem comes from how other tr people treat us and how other people talk to us. So if someone um, close to you, whether that's a friend or a family member um, or a significant other, is constantly spewing negative words at you like, oh, um, you're not that attractive or, oh, you're overly sensitive, you're too dramatic, you're too this, you're too that, or you're not enough of this and not enough of that. Um, unfortunately, um, the voices of those around us end up becoming, I mean, if we're not careful, they end up becoming our own self-talk. So, and like, you've probably heard people talking and they're just like, oh, um, this is this is probably stupid, but I have a question. Or, oh, um, I I'm just so dumb. I I don't get it. Can you explain it again? Where people start um, insulting themselves before you get a chance to. Um, when people talk like that, it's usually a sign that they've been emotionally abused at some point in their life because <laughs> they've learned. Okay, um, it really hurts when other people say negative things to me. Um, at least if I say it, then I have control over when it's said and how it's said. Um, so it's kind of a survival tactic. Um, but that's, that's a sign usually that someone has a low self-esteem from um, being hurt. So <laughs> those are some signs, um, some kind of causes of where low self-esteem kind of comes from. But we are not helpless, even if uh, we've experienced some of those things. Um, it doesn't necessarily dictate that we, you know, like are <coughs> fated um, or destined to um, continue having low self-esteem. Um, thankfully, there are many, many ways to address low self-esteem and to improve it. Um, and I kind of just want to take a second and tell a, a small snippet of my story because I think that um, all these facts are great um, and I hope that it's helpful. But I really think that the way to bring healing um, amongst ourselves is to see how another human being has dealt with it, um, to really feel like another human being understands exactly um, or as much as possible of what I'm going through um, and has learned how to navigate it. So as far as my story with low self-esteem, um, I remember like my low self-esteem started when I was young. I just remember always feeling like I, um, was not attractive. Um, and like I did not measure up as far as other girls in my class and things like that, because, um, a lot of times if I was interested in a guy, um, we would become like really close and I'm like, oh, this is going great. And then, um, he would quickly label me as his best friend and talk to me about how much he was attracted to other girls. <laughs> so it just kind of messed with me after a while. I started feeling very much like, okay, like I'm not desirable um, in a romantic capacity. Um, and this is like elementary school, middle school, um, and all the way up. And then um, to kind of compound that, I got bullied a lot for being too skinny. So um, to this day, I still struggle with that. I do, I do struggle with feeling like I'm not attractive, like I'm not um, as feminine because I'm not as, as thick or as curvy as I would like to be. Um, and I, I don't want to sound insensitive because I do know um, that there are thicker women who um, <clears throat> would like to have a, a more slender body type like mine. Um, but I also think that there are a lot of people like me who are more slender and that it's not 
okay to, um, oh, I'm sorry, I wanna make sure I'm still live on Instagram. Um, it's not okay to discredit the experience of people um, just because you might want something. For example, um, if I see someone who is um, shorter than me and I'm like, oh man, I wish I was shorter. Um, like I still have a right to feel that way, even though like a lot of people want to be tall. That doesn't take away my desire to be short, if that makes sense. So I feel like <laughs> it's important to recognize that there, there are skinny people who have physical insecurities too. Um, and that those things need to be talked about and not just squashed because um, there are people who would like to be skinny. Um, so <laughs> as far as my story, I really struggle with um, just not feeling very confident about my about my physical appearance, my physique, um, and also just not feeling very confident in my ability to maintain relationships because um, because I am mentally ill, and I think that that's something we need to talk about. Um, those of us who who do struggle with anxiety, depression, um, and things of the like. Um, it's very easy to feel like like you're less than um, because I I feel as though okay um, I know that I'm hard to deal with well, at least in my mind um, I know that it's not easy to always know how to um, comfort someone who who exhibits mental illness or how to um, help someone through a depressive episode or um, fill someone, give physical affirmation and affection to someone who feels um, like they are not um, as desirable. Like I understand how it could be difficult to be in a relationship with someone like me. Um, so therefore I feel sometimes um, like I do not deserve unconditional love because I have so many, um, I kind of, I guess like factors to deal with. Um, and I think that's probably one of the biggest things, like being mentally ill has caused me to have a low self-esteem because um, there are times when even I don't want to deal with the fact that I'm mentally ill. So how can I expect someone else to want to deal with it? Um, and I think, I think that that's not really fair um, because everyone has some type of hang up, some type of issue. It might not be diagnosed, um, but it's important for those of us who do have mental illness to remember um, that we're still human beings and we're still worthy of love. We still have intrinsic value as children of God. We um, can still be beautiful and we tend to be more empathetic and compassionate than the average person, which is definitely a huge strength. Um, because we know what it's like to feel um, hurt and to feel um, emotional and to feel confused. So we tend to have more compassion. Um, so I think that there are some positive aspects um, that come from being a mental illness warrior. And I tend in my mind to negate those and to only focus on the perceived negatives in myself. And how I'm starting to work through that um, because it always comes back to, okay, these things have happened to us. People have said things to us. Um, in relationships, breakups um, are really, really tough on someone with low self-esteem because we tend to think, oh, like if I had just done something differently or, um, you know, we kind of take it as confirmation that we're unworthy. Um, we're like, oh, like if I was good enough then this person wouldn't have left. Um, which isn't a very ba balanced view of a breakup because um, it always takes two. There are two people in the relationship, so it's two people who um, contribute to it ending. Um, so I think it's not um, it's not a quick fix as far as self-esteem. It's not really something that um, can just go away with the snap of a finger when someone says, oh, you're great. And then I was like, okay, low self-esteem, all gone. <laughs> it, it doesn't quite work that way, but um, it can get better. The reason why 
I mentioned that it's not necessarily a quick fix is because I know that I've been um, very discouraged in the past where I'm like, okay, like I've, I've accepted that I have a low self-esteem, um, but why isn't it fixed yet? Um, and just kind of feeling like I, I want to make sure that I'm live. I hope I am. But I just, um, I know that it can be kind of disconcerting to feel like, okay, I'm trying these self-esteem strategies and I'm still not feeling um, much better. And I think that it's important for us to recognize that self-esteem isn't really a checklist type of thing. Um, it's not really something where you can just be like, okay, well, I said my positive affirmations today. And, um, you know, like I got a compliment or something like that. Like self-esteem is more of a way of life. Um, the way that I'm learning to deal with it is one, questioning the negative thought pattern. So for example, um, when I have a thought like, oh, um, you know, like this person that I was interested in didn't pay me any mind, so I must not be attractive or I must not be smart or funny enough or whatever something, whatever, ad insert any adjective really. I must not be blank enough. Um, when in reality, like there's so many reasons like this person could be shy, this person could be talking to someone already, like this person could you know, like have a bunch of issues that they're personally working with and they're just not even looking for a relationship. And that is what tends to be the root of low self-esteem is that we are not really thinking about the, the big picture, all the factors um, in, in the interactions that we have with, with each other. Um, we're more just thinking um, about ourselves. Um, so that, that mindset of taking everything incredibly personally is what needs to be flipped. So as opposed to thinking, oh, like my coworker, they didn't smile and say hi to me. Like I must have said or done something to offend them. Instead of thinking that, thinking, okay, maybe they're tired. Maybe they're going through something. Maybe they're just distracted. They're stressed out. Um, and kind of leaving room for a gray area. Not everything is your fault. Not everything it has anything to do with you. Um, and it's easier said than done, but as much as is possible, trying to um, let go of that personalization, let go of making everything personal, um, especially criticism. And um, making sure that you really, really tap into your support system and try to start believing people when they tell you, um, I'm so concerned. I don't think, I wanna make sure that I'm live on Instagram too. I hope I am. But anyway, um, because your support system usually has a more balanced view of you than you do. Um, so actually trying to believe your family members and friends when they say a positive thing, um, if it's your family members and friends who are continually telling you negative things, then never mind. Um, but if you have a lot of people who are saying things like, oh, why are you so hard on yourself? Or um, I don't know if I would really take it that way. Maybe that person was just having a bad day. When you start hearing people give you alternate perspectives, don't just immediately dismiss them, but start to understand, okay, yeah, maybe the way that I'm thinking isn't really fair. Um, maybe it's not very balanced. Um, also, something that helps with self-esteem is definitely to get involved in something, um, feeling like you have a sense of purpose, feeling like you're adding something valuable and helpful to the world. So um, any charity that you can get involved in, and I don't even mean personally, because I know that we're all trying to self-distance right now, which is really important, um, but just donating to charities, especially um, there are a lot of, of nonprofits right now. Um, where there are people who are, you know, like on the front lines helping people through this pandemic. And if you can in any way help, just spread the word or donate or um, <clears throat> distribute food, anything that you can do, really, whatever it is that is on your heart, 
any um, purposeful thing that you can get involved in, like almost automatically improves your self-esteem because you feel like you have value, you feel like you're making a difference and you feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself and you're adding some good in the world. Um, and that is so incredibly important. Um, so definitely, 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 as much as possible, try to get involved in some type of um, ministry or some type of purpose-driven activity so that you can feel like you're making a positive difference in the world. Because um, that definitely does help with self-esteem. Um, some people may not love this one. I know I didn't, but, <laughs> but exercise, it really, really is so helpful for self-esteem um, for many reasons. One, studies show that, um, well, let me not lie. I've heard that studies show <laughs> that exercising um, causes you to then make other healthy lifestyle changes. Um, and I can say that that's true in my own life. The more that I exercise, the more I eat healthier, um, the more that I drink water, um, and the more that I sleep better and kind of take care of myself. So exercise can really, really help your self-esteem. Also, just aesthetically, like physically, um, you might look better, which will also make you feel better, but at least about your physical appearance. So exercise really does help um, your self-esteem. Um, and not believing the lie that just because someone thinks something about you, you need to take that on or own that and accept that. Um, <clears throat> for me, it was revolutionary, just the idea that I get to choose um, what criticism and what compliments I allowed to pass through um, into my belief system. So it's your choice, if someone is criticizing you, it's your choice to say um, whether or not you agree with that. You don't have to just automatically take on whatever anyone says. Um, and especially if someone is spewing negativity at you, um, I would as much as possible distance myself from that person because those of us with low self-esteem don't need any help having low self-esteem. Um, trying new hobbies. Um, you'd be surprised how much it boosts your self-esteem just to find out that you're good at something, or even if you're not good at something, that you're just having fun. Um, and especially if it's something you can do with other people, socializing is awesome. Um, and just kind of taking care of yourself shows yourself <laughs> that you value yourself. <laughs> and what I mean by that is the more that you are intentional about setting your boundaries and about not just saying no all the time because you want people to like you, but actually um, setting boundaries in order to take care of um, your mental and physical and emotional health, um, the more that you will automatically feel more valued. Because, I mean, when you think about in relationships, how do you show that you value the other person? You do things for them, you take care of them, you, you know, like are compassionate towards them, you show them love. Um, so you have a responsibility to yourself. You are a human being, just like you make sacrifices for your friends and family. You need to be intentional about doing things for yourself because that will prove to you that you value you. Um, <clears throat> that's one thing that I've learned from people who I do view as having a more healthy self-esteem. Um, they don't just let anyone talk to them any type of way. They don't just let people walk all over them. Um, they set boundaries because they care about themselves. Um, and once you start putting yourself first, I'm talking to myself too. Once you start putting yourself first, you will see that um, self-esteem naturally kind of follows. Um, and it does help. I've, I've done this where I, I just write down lists of things that I actually do like about myself because... Those of us with low self-esteem, we tend not to um, really think about the things that we like about ourselves. And it can actually be really difficult um, to come up with things that we do like. Um, and it's much easier to come up with a laundry list of things that we don't like. But I would challenge you to make a list of things that you actually appreciate about yourself. Um, I like to sing. I like to write. I enjoy um, dancing. Um, I sometimes make people laugh. <laughs> I am a good reader, you know, like whatever it is. Um, and as much as possible, whenever you think of something that you like, add to your list. 
And in times when you're feeling particularly down about yourself, um, refer back to the list of attributes that you appreciate about yourself. Um, and that kind of goes along with creating a self-esteem file. Now, this is something that I actually have done. Um, so I went back through my messages on Facebook and my text messages, and I, as much as possible, looked for uh, all the compliments that I've received. And I wrote them down, um, a different color pens and things like that. And I gathered like birthday cards and things like that that I have, and I put them all in this folder. Um, and it's called a self-esteem file. And whenever um, you're feeling like less than or just feeling down, you can open up your self-esteem file and see how much people love you, see how much people value you, see um, which attributes people appreciate the most about you. Um, and it is comforting to realize, wow, like a lot of people have told me that I'm beautiful. Maybe I'm not as unattractive as I thought. Or wow, like a lot of people told me I'm smart. You know, like maybe I, I actually am more capable than I thought. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to make a self-esteem file. Um, also just looking through old pictures. I take a lot of pictures um, and there's a reason for that. I go back through my phone um, and I'll go back like four or five years and just look at all the pictures that I have with my friends or things that I've done. Um, and a lot of times I'll be surprised about um, things that I've accomplished that I've completely forgot about because I tend to just focus on the negative. So sometimes even something as simple as going through your old pictures can remind you, hey, like I have these friends who who obviously see something positive about me because, you know, like they want me around, you know, like they've included me in all these memories. Um, and also just <laughs> going back and remembering the things that you've done um, that were good and that were positive. Um, setting goals is really good for self-esteem because um, when you set goals and achieve them, then you feel like, oh, I'm being productive and I'm capable um, and I'm accountable. And <laughs> that can definitely boost your self-esteem. Um, also, distancing yourself from the negative thoughts as far as mentally. So um, you can even give your inner critic a name. Um, I do have a friend who said that. She's, she said that um, she had her like negative <laughs> inner voice and then she had like her more balanced inner voice. Um, and she would almost like talk to herself, which sounds kind of crazy, but it's not, and it works. <laughs> so, so when your inner critic starts saying, oh, like you messed this thing up and, and you're stupid and you're just not good and you're a mistake and you always, you know, like um, <clears throat> just muddle things and blah, 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 um, kind of taking a step back and saying, okay, um, those were the automatic thoughts, but I can then make the decision to um, kind of decide, okay, like, am I going to question those thoughts or just automatically accept them? Because our automatic thoughts and our automatic feelings are not necessarily reality or truth. Um, and we need to take inventory of what those uh, negative thoughts and feelings are, and then try and create a more balanced view through questioning. So for example, um, if I, okay, like if I, if I lose something, which happens often, I'm very forgetful. <laughs> um, instead of, like my, my automatic thought um, would usually be something like, oh, I'm just, I just suck at adulting. Like I'm just not good at life. I'm not nearly as together as my friends. My friends just seem to be so together and they're always on top of it. Like I can't believe that I am so forgetful. Um, and do you see how I just progress? I just progress from, okay, I forgot something all the way to I'm not as good as my friends and I'm not good at adulting and I'm just not going to be successful in life. Um, and I'm sure um, you may be thinking, how did we get here? Um, but that is the power of a low self-esteem. Something as minuscule as forgetting something can then become, I'm not going to be successful in life and I suck at adulting. Um, so how do we combat that? Going back to the roots. Okay this all originated from me forgetting something and just leaving it as an isolated experience. I forgot something. I am not a mistake and I'm not incapable. So it's okay to have those automatic thoughts. We can't really control what happens immediately, but we can control what we believe. We can control 
which thoughts and feelings we accept and which ones we reject. Um, so as much as possible, kind of view your thoughts from a third person perspective. Um, like, would my friends ever say this to me? Or would I ever say this to my friends? And try not to say anything to yourself that you wouldn't say to your friends. If you want to call your friends stupid, don't call yourself stupid. If you want to call your friend ugly, then don't call yourself ugly. Um, and you really need to try and be intentional about being your own best friend. Um, and I'm talking to myself so much, guys. Like, I'm really talking to myself right now. <laughs> um, but that's why we're here, because we're all learning this whole life thing together. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely. This is a huge one. As much as possible, stay away from comparing yourself to other people, um, because that definitely hurt self-esteem um it can feel like i'm sorry this one really gets me because i do i do this a lot but comparing yourself to other people isn't fair because you're not meant to live anybody else's life you're meant to live your life and you weren't created to be like her or like him or like them um you were created to be your own authentic self and the more that you are looking to other people, um, the more that you are going to feel inadequate because you're not going to be more <laughs> somebody else than they are. You will never succeed in that. So if you are comparing yourself to Ashley, um, you're always going to feel inadequate because you're never going to be more Ashley than Ashley. You need to worry about being yourself. Um, so I know that society has almost groomed us, especially as females, to compare ourselves to other people. Um, not that males don't do it, um, because they do. But I know that as females, we definitely compare ourselves like, oh, I wish I had her body or her hair or her looks or her clothes, whatever. Um, but uh, let's just think about how unproductive that is. Because if we're just hoping to look or be or have something like this other person, um, Ultimately, all it does is make us feel bad about what we have and who we are. Um, and it's not really going to get us anywhere. Um, so as much as possible, try not to compare yourself. Um, try to think about where you were and where you are now. Try to think about the things that you've accomplished and the positive changes that you've made. Um, and compare yourself to your younger self rather than comparing yourself to um, the people around you. Um, Set it aside a limited time. So it is really hard to just stop negative self-talk and stop low self-esteem cold turkey. Um, so instead, one thing that you can do is schedule a time where you just kind of like feel bad. Um, and it has to be a short time, um, just like five, 10 minutes where you can just like feel bad um, and then incrementally reducing that time. But that way, you're not just going to be indefinitely thinking negative thoughts about yourself. You're putting a time limit on it. So if a negative thought comes up during the day, you're just like, oh, I can't think about that right now. I'm going to leave it for my designated time um, to at least start getting your mind out of negative self-talking all the time um, and reducing it to a specific um, section of your day. Um, also reducing strong language. So instead of saying, oh, I'm a mistake, I always mess up, I never get anything right, I'm so broken. Um, so those are some really strong words. So you can kind of change that and say, okay, um, do I really always mess up? Is that really true? Probably not. Um, it's different to say, okay, I messed up on this one thing. That's fair and I can accept that and then I can do better next time. Um, but making a mistake and being a mistake are two very different things. And those of us who have a low self-esteem tend not to separate the two. Um, so as much as possible, try to get away from that strong language. Um, I made a mistake, not I am a mistake. Um, I forgot something, not I always forget or I'm super forgetful. Um, everyone is imperfect. Even the people that you view as being so together and, and so this and so that. Um, Everyone has their vice. So as much as possible, try not to compare yourself and try not to idolize other people. Um, and yeah, I mentioned not personalizing. 
oh, do not maximize your mistakes. Um, so don't be like, oh, this is just like a huge mistake and I'll never recover from it. And this is all everyone's gonna view me as, as a person who made this huge mistake. Probably not, <laughs> like probably not. Like <laughs> we tend to think like that our mistakes are so big and that people really care and that it's gonna be a thing. And probably by the end of that same day, people will have been moved on. Um, and we're the ones holding on to it and giving it power, um, as opposed to try to kind of flip the switch. And instead of maximizing your um, mistakes, maximize your accomplishments and celebrate your small victories. Um, because we tend to not do that as um, low self-esteem people. We tend to um, minimize our victories and maximize our mistakes. So we want to switch that and try to really focus on, okay, um, taking inventory each day. What did I do right? What are some of the positives? Um, or what's one compliment that I've received recently? Trying to be very intentional about looking towards the positive because um, we've made pathways in our minds that are negative. Um, and it's going to take time and intentionality in order to come out of that. Um, and as much as possible, um, just not accepting um, what other people say, not projecting our view of ourselves onto other people as well. Um, so if I'm feeling down about myself, not thinking, oh, this person must think um, that I'm not attractive or that I'm not smart or blah, blah, blah. Um, don't project how you feel about yourself onto other people. There are other people, I don't believe that quote at all, where people are just like, oh, no one can love you if you don't love yourself. That's not true. A whole bunch of people love me. So, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not saying that in a conceited manner because I'm sure a whole lot of people love you too. Um, and I think that that quote is actually very damaging because then um, for those of us who, who happen not to love ourselves, we're just like, we start to believe, at least I, I started to believe that it was true and that people didn't love me or couldn't love me because I didn't love myself. Now, what I will say is true is that it's difficult to receive love if you have a low self-esteem. It's difficult to receive love well, but it doesn't mean that the person doesn't love you, but it's difficult for me to interpret um, love because I believe that I am unworthy. So I always feel like I need to um, kind of, um, earn, earn love instead of just feeling like I deserve it intrinsically because I have inherent value. Um, and so I will say that so, for those of us who have a low self-esteem, it is, um, a little more difficult to receive love, um, well, but it's not impossible. And I think if someone in your life is really intentional and in trying to show you love and compassion and support, um, to take that and to believe that you deserve it and to start questioning your thoughts that you are unworthy of love um, for whatever reason or for or because of whatever experiences you've had or what someone else may have told you. Um, and I think what's really important as far as having a balanced and healthy um, self-esteem is to um, figure out how God feels about you, about us, um, so I want to read you some Bible verses and then we're going to close um, this Wellness Wednesday. I did want to mention um, the other day um, while I was reading this book, I just happened to kind of, I guess, have this epiphany. Um, I believe it was the Holy Spirit. Um, and I just kind of thought, hey, like I've never really told my story on here like I, I've obviously told like bits and pieces um, but I've never told the whole story um, in general so I did that I, I made a whole video about kind of my story as a mentally ill person from my childhood up until now um, and I talk about um, just my experience of, of having low self-esteem having depression anxiety and bipolar type 2 um, and what that journey has looked like what it's felt like and um, I'm planning to post that either tomorrow or Friday most likely tomorrow so please be on the lookout for that um, I, I think that it could be really helpful so um, when I post it tomorrow if you could please just share that I think that um, a lot of people struggle 
not, I think, I know that a lot of people struggle from mental illness. And I think that um, God allowed me to go through this so that I can hopefully help other people. Um, so please, please share it, um, even if you're unable to watch it. But I, but I am going to post my story um, in the coming days. So be on the lookout for that. And I, I'm going to entitle it God in the Psych Ward um, because that's what happened. So um, I'm going to grab my Bible and I'm going to read these Bible verses to you. Um, and then we're going to close out this Wellness Wednesday on self-esteem. I really, really hope that this was helpful. Um, this this topic is definitely, definitely um, near and dear to my heart because it's something that I, I have struggled with for a long time, obviously, and I still struggle with. Um, but I hope that we can help each other um, and support each other. Um, so let me grab my Bible real quick. So um, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20, if you guys have your Bible with you, but 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20, it says, you were bought with a price. You were actually purchased with the precious blood of Jesus and made his own. Um, so I think it's important for us to remember um, that God values us so much more than I think we'll ever really um, value ourselves um, and that he made such a great sacrifice for you and a lot of times I feel like okay yeah like God loves other people and God did that stuff for other people but I'm a mistake I'm unworthy um, I've done horrible things and it's really it's important not to project our feelings onto other people but it's especially important not to project how we view ourselves onto God um, because I know that I'm incredibly hard on myself and I have no grace for myself. My perfectionism is very strong and it's not fair to project that onto God. When God has showed us um, that he does nothing but love us unconditionally. Um, so it's important to, to keep that in mind um, that our, our view of ourselves does not dictate other people's views, view of us. Um, John 1 verse 12, it says, but to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority and privilege to become children of God. Um, so again, just this idea that, um, that God loves us so much that he calls us his children. Genesis 1 verse 26 says, Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. So God loves us. God calls us his children. God made us in his image, which means we have, we each have our own piece of the glory of God. First Peter 2, verse 9. And we're almost done, but I do think that this is really important. I always end Wellness Wednesdays with Bible verses. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a, a consecrated nation, a people for God's own possession. So, oh, no. What happened? 